deal about uh, cymos type of inflorescence so cymos type of inflorescence is a definite type of inflorescence or this one is considered as a determinate type of inflorescence here growth of the peduncle ends in a flower therefore growth of this peduncle is restricted by means of formation of the flower at its at its tip region main axis of peduncle bear lateral branches each ending in a flower in cymose the terminal flower is the oldest one while the younger one are present on the lower side so this one is the first flower lateral branch will be produced and it will again end in a flower third flower will be produced at this position okay so this type of succession is a basi petal type of a succession so the order of development of the flower is from apex to the base that is basi petal the order of opening of the flower is centrifugal what is centrifugal when such a type of a peduncle uh, present in the form of receptacle the maturity starts from center to periphery in other words the central flowers are older while peripheral flowers are younger which is called as a centrifugal kind of a succession this cymos type of inflorescences further divided into solitary then uniparous biparous or multiparous uniparous type of inflorescences is also called as a monocasial biparous as a dicasial and uh, multiparous as a polycasial just see about the solitary type of a inflorescence what is solitary type of inflorescence when the inflorescence is represented by means of a single flower then it is called as a solitary type of inflorescence then this single flower may be present at either at the apical position or terminal position or this flower may be present at the axillary position okay based on the position of the these single flower this one is called as a terminal or apical solitary while this one is called as a axillary solitary okay as this flower is present at the terminal position apical position therefore it is called as a terminally solitary and this flower is present at the axillary position that's why it is called as a axillary solitary so solitary type of inflorescences when the apical or axillary bud forms a single flower it is called as <coughs> axillary or apical solitary sign type of a inflorescence its further development is limited or check and therefore such type of inflorescence is called as a solitary one these flowers are always bracteate okay uh, examples are uh, hibiscus as well as datura just see the next one type of a inflorescence which is called as uniparous or monocasial sign okay so in uniparous type of inflorescence main axis ends in the formation of flower okay main axis will end in the formation of flower peduncle will produce one lateral branch below the terminal flower and this single lateral branch also behave like the first one like the main axis therefore this one is called as a monocasial sign 
type of inflorescence if you see here these two figures represent the monocasial sign type of inflorescence here this one is the main axis of the inflorescence which ends in a flower okay so uh, just see here this is a first flower this is the main axis which ends in a flower laterally it produces another one branch it again ends in a flower again the second branch behave as the first one it again produces the third one flower fourth one flower fifth one flower or if you see in this condition main axis ends in a flower okay so this one becomes the first flower again it produces lateral branch this lateral branch again ends in a second flower this branch will again produces lateral branch again it ends in a flower in case of monocasial uh, type of inflorescence each peduncle produces only a single lateral branch which ends in a flower as it produces single lateral branch therefore it is called as a mono okay single and therefore mono it may be either scorpoid or helicoid what is scorpoid and helicoid condition if you see here the main axis ends in a flower it produces lateral branch on its left side okay this again ends in a flower it again produces a lateral branch on its left side here you will observe again on the left side again on the left side okay see the scorpoid condition main axis ends in a flower it produces lateral branch on its left side second produces lateral branch on its right side again if you see here this is the left side again right side so in scorpoid case the flowers are produced to the left and to the right so it should zigzag type of a arrangement while in helicoid type it forms a helix like structure it forms a coil structure as as lateral branches produces flower on a same side so helicoid monocasial and scorpoid monocasial are two types of the uh, inflorescence which are present in the cymos type of a inflorescence where are the figures okay this figures are not present here okay no problem so just see here what is the helicoid sign and what are what is the scorpoid sign in this type each lateral branch develops on the same side is it your each lateral branch develops on the same side successively suppose this one is a main peduncle it ends in a flower lateral it produces again another branch it again ends in a flower third one again ends in a flower fourth one again ends in flower or it may be first maybe the second maybe the third maybe the fourth maybe the five so it forms a helix like structure okay so the apex of the peduncle uh, sorry here lateral branch develops on the same side successively and due to this coil or helix like structure is formed and therefore this inflorescence is called as a helicoid one example is a hamelia patterns what is the scorpoid condition in this type the main axis of the peduncle terminates into flower okay so this one becomes the first flower and single lateral branch axis is given out alternately to the right and to the left so this is second one this is third one fourth <coughs> fifth 
in this way so it forms a zigzag like structure and therefore such a type of inflorescence is called as a scorpoid uh, scorpoid monocasal sign uh, such type of inflorescence can be observed in parthenium trichodesma elytropium or maybe in the radanculus just see the dicasial type of inflorescence what is dicasial uh, type of inflorescence in this case main axis ends in a flower okay main axis ends in a flower and at the same time basal to opposite lateral branches produces the young flower so suppose this one is the main axis which ends in a flower it laterally produces two branches at a time which are opposite to each other okay again uh, suppose this one is the first flower third flower will be produced in this position so this is the dicasial condition can be observed in the chlorodendron dianthus bougainvillea these are the examples so if you see here this is the main axis it ends in a flower so this becomes the first one flower laterally it produces two branches and they again ends in a flower so it forms the dicasial type of a inflorescence uh, one, uh, you can observe here also if you see this one this is the main axis which ends in a flower so this becomes the first flower laterally it produces two branches and again they ends in a flower suppose this one becomes the second flower and this one becomes the second flower these are the third flowers so this is a complete dicasial type of inflorescence and what is polycasial type of inflorescence last one type in polycasial case main axis ends in a flower and laterally it produces more than two lateral branches which again ends in a flower okay so it forms the group of a flower or bloom of the flower third flower will be produced on the second one in this way so number of flowers are present of the same age so this is called as a polycasial or multiparous kind of the inflorescence in this kind the main axis end in flower and at the same time it again produces several lateral flowers around many lateral flowers developing more or less simultaneously then it is called as a polycasial type of inflorescence such a type of inflorescence can be observed in the calotropis plant or uh, in the nerium plant uh, this one is the polycasial type of a inflorescence here you can't differentiate where is the first flower where is the second flower almost a bloom of a flower actual inflorescence or a flower bouquet uh, is generally formed in a polycasial type of a inflorescence so this is about the cymos type of a inflorescence in case of cymos first one type of inflorescence is a solitary solitary that means single flower when represent the inflorescence okay it may be present at the terminal position or it may be present at the axillary position and based on their position solitary type of inflorescence may be the terminal solitary or apical solitary or it may be axillary solitary then uh, monocasial uh, or uh, helicoid sign here main axis ends in a flower laterally it produces a single lateral branch which again ends in a flower in helico uh, in a monocasial there are two types first one is a helicoid another one is a squarpoid what is difference in case of helicoid type of uh, uh same inflorescence the flowers are produced on the same side due to which a coil or helix like structure is produced while in case of scorpoid sign the flowers are produced 
alternately to the life uh, to the right and to the left so it forms a zigzag like uh, appearance this one is a dicasial type of a uh, inflorescence here main axis ends in a flower laterally it produces two lateral branch which again ends in a flower again third flowers uh, third number or third pair of flower is produced on the second lateral branch so this becomes the dicasial one and this one is the multiparous or polycasial type of inflorescence main axis ends in a flower so this becomes the first one flower okay this is the first one flower uh, laterally it produces more than two so these are the positions of the second flower on the second one third flower will be produced this is the third one this becomes the third one this one also the number third okay not fourth number this one becomes the, again third one flower okay uh, on the second one paid uh, on the second one lateral one third number flower will be produced so such a type of inflorescence is called as a multiparous type of a inflorescence so this was uh, about the cymos type of inflorescence in the next video we will uh, uh, see about the special type of a inflorescence till then goodbye have a nice day